Okay guys, welcome back to another undetermined coefficient problem. So this one's gonna be a little bit trickier and we see right away that that is the case. We have a t cosine t. So this is just a little bit trickier than what we've been dealing with. Um, and recall that what we have been dealing with are polynomials, exponentials, and then the cosine and sine. So typically these three cases, whenever we have a non-homogeneous equation, with one of these on the right hand side, typically that's whenever undetermined coefficients will work. But in this problem, we have a combination of them. So it gets a little harder when we start multiplying these by each other, like a polynomial times an exponential or times a cosine or sine, but it can still be done using undetermined coefficients and we will take a look at that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip finding the homogeneous part and I'm just gonna go straight into the particular solution. So let's go ahead and skip to step number two and let's find the particular solution form. So we have a t times a cosine of t. And since this expression involves only these three things, then we know that undetermined coefficients will most likely work, and so that's how we are going to proceed. So if we were to differentiate this, we can see that we would get a cosine t minus t times sine t. So we have two different forms that have been introduced. And if we were to differentiate this again, we would get a negative sine t, and then minus sine t again, and minus t cosine t. So we can see that this guy right here is a repeat of this guy right here, so I'm going to terminate this one. So then let's go ahead and combine this, so we have negative two sine t. If we were to differentiate that, we would get a negative cosine t, which again is a repeat of this guy right here, so we're gonna terminate right there and we are done. So let's look at all the unique forms. We have a t cosine t, we have a cosine t, we have a t sine t, and then we also have a sine t. So the particular solution form is just gonna be undetermined coefficients times all of these different forms. So a times t cos t plus b times t sine t plus c times cos t plus d times sine t. And we can already see why this is a little bit trickier. We have a lot more undetermined coefficients to determine. So let's go ahead and differentiate this twice and then throw it back into our differential equation. So yp prime, we have a cosine t minus a t times sine t, and then plus b sine t plus b t cosine t minus c times sine t and then plus d times cosine t. So we can throw some of these things together and make it a little bit simpler looking. So let's get the cosine t's together. So we have a plus d times cosine t. Let's get the sines together. And then plus a b minus c times sine t. And then we have a minus a t sine t and then a plus b t cosine t. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our yp double prime. All right, so this is equal to negative a plus d sine t plus b minus c cosine t minus a sine t for this term right here, and then we have to do the product rule, so minus a t cosine t. And then we have to do the product rule for this last term. So we get plus b times cosine t, and then minus b t times a sine t. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. I'm gonna write this as minus 2a plus d times sine t plus 2b minus c cosine t. And then we have a minus a t cos t and a minus b t sine t. Okay, so now we have all three forms for a different equation. So let's go ahead and plug it back in and I'm gonna go ahead and just write this out. I'll probably fast forward through it because it's gonna be a lot of writing. So I will see you guys on the other side. Okay, so we just plugged in yp, yp prime, and yp double prime back into our differential equation and we got this right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the signs together first. So we have a negative one half times two a, which gives us negative a, and then negative one half times d, which is minus one half times d. And any other signs, here we go right here. So minus b plus c, 
and then finally a plus D. So all those for the sine T. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the cosine T's. So we have a B minus one half times C, any other cosine T's? Okay, minus A minus D, any other guys? And a plus C times cosine T. Okay, and now let's go ahead and get the T times sine T's. So where are my T times sine T's? Right here is one. So we have a minus one half B times T sine T. Any others? Oh, we have a plus A right there. And we have a plus B, and that'll do it. So T times sine T. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the T times cosine T. All right, so we have a minus one half times A from this guy. And let's keep looking, so minus B, and then a plus A, T times cosine T's. And this all has to equal T times cosine T. Okay, so we get four equations from this. Our first equation is the coefficient from the sine T, and we know this has to equal zero because there is no sine T on the right-hand side. And the same thing with these two. There's no cosine T and there's no T times sine T on the right-hand side, so all of these have to sum to zero as well. But this guy right here in front of the T cosine T, we do have a T cosine T on the right-hand side, and the coefficient is one, so this guy has to equal one. So we have four equations and four unknowns. Okay, so the easiest way to solve a four by four system is probably to just use matrices, and that's how I'm gonna do it, rather than doing a bunch of substitution, although you could do it. I'm sure you guys wouldn't have a problem doing it, but let me just show you guys how to use a, um, a matrix to solve this. And our variables will be in the order of A, B, C, D. And so the first equation's gotta equal zero, 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 then one. So first equation, second equation, third equation, and then last equation. So anyway, let's go ahead and fill this out. So in the first row, which corresponds to our first equation, we have a negative one, a negative one for minus b, and then we have a one, and then a one half. Uh, for the second row, our second equation, we have a negative one, a positive one, a one half and then a negative one. And for the third equation, we have a one, a one half and then zero, zero. And then we have one half, one, zero, zero. So all we have to do is just matrix multiply. You can use your calculator. Um, so find the inverse of this guy, multiply it by this guy. And what you end up getting is the vector two fifths, negative four fifths, four 20 fifths, and then negative 28 20 fifths. So this would be A, this would be B, this would be C, and this would be D. Okay, so now that we've determined our coefficients, we can plug those into our assumption and get our particular solution. So YP is equal to 2 fifths T cosine T minus 4 fifths T times sine T plus 4 20 fifths cosine T and then minus 28 over 25 times sine t. So this is the answer. This is our particular solution. This is not the general solution because we don't, we never bothered solving for the homogeneous. Uh, so this is just the particular solution. And again, I do want to stress the importance of finding the homogeneous solution first because we need to make sure that each term in the particular solution is linearly independent. And in this example, we didn't do that, but that's because I already knew that it was going to come out okay so this was mainly just for demonstration purposes for a more complex example but in the next video we will take a look at what happens whenever we do encounter that problem so whenever we have a term in our particular solution form that we determine that is also included in the homogeneous solution i'll show you guys how to handle that because there is something that you need to do uh, otherwise if you were to ignore that and just work through it then basically what would happen is probably all the coefficients would cancel out and everything would sum to zero no matter what because it's part of the homogeneous solution so it would be impossible to determine the undetermined coefficients and if you can't determine the undetermined coefficients you can't get your particular solution so anyway see you guys next time